Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. This is Connie with Prairie Paper Crafts coming on to share with you the uh, tag, the cooking tag file that I had made previously. I had a request to make this, so I'm going to put this together and give you some, some dimensions and share with you how I created the tag and everything. And I have to apologize. This morning I did a video on the Nutty Bunch paper piece set. I had a request to share how I put that together. Well, I was out of frame quite a bit, so I apologize. I'm going to recut the pieces, redo the video. So that's why this one is coming up first. Again, I'm very sorry. So I apologize. But we will move on and live and learn, right? Okay, so things I'm using. I have this written down, the notepad here. I'm going to kind of go through and give you a little bit of an idea. I did a lot of uh, slicing, welding, but not in design space. You don't have to do it that way. You don't have to make it that difficult. You could uh, just use the basic tag and the other pieces that I've done and like this piece and these two. You could do that all with a corner rounder or um, you don't have to use the same border I did to do all of that. So this is just how involved I get when I do something. I have to make things everything difficult. But first of all, I am using the uh, Little Chef Girl from Treasure Box Designs. This is the Little Gems Cooking design. I think it's on sale for a dollar right now, so it might be in the retiring file. So if you want this, be sure you grab it fairly soon. I don't know how long it'll be available. I don't. I work with other design companies um, files, but not promoting any one over another right now. That's just how I wanted to share with you that is what I used. She is cut when she's paper pieced together, she's about four inches tall. And this is how it came out on um, Design Space when I paper pieced her together there. And then if you just group her, uh, she came out to 2.548 inches wide. So just to give you a, an idea, she's basically about four inches tall. So then on to these pieces. I'm going to start with the base tag. This is from Cricut Design Space, Emma's and Mary 4021B as in Bravo. I like this tag. It reminds me a lot of the Graphic 45 tags. And I'll leave it at that, just like their tags style. So this is cut at 3.875 inches wide, 5.75 inches high. I did hide the contour of the little hole because I'll cut my own. I have my next layer, same tag design obviously. This top layer, okay, so the checkered piece, is cut 3.75 wide, 5.625 high. The back piece I'm putting on is the same dimension that I just gave. I did mirror this one or flip it when I was in design studio so I didn't have to do it when I went to my cutting mats. Uh, that way it just fits much better. Just give you an idea what I did there. Okay, then this border. This is where it gets kind of involved. This bottom piece, this border piece are the same. You can see how I used it too. I did get smart there. This is the lace borders file from my scrap chick. So I only used the top layer of the one. Again, you could just cut this with the paper punch. You don't have to do this. But this piece, this piece right here, 
Um, bear with me just a moment here. We're trying to read through my notes, I am sorry. So this is cut at 3.625 inches wide, one and a half inches tall. What I would recommend, taking this tag, duplicating it, slicing off, like say, two inches of it, okay, just for example. And then you want to get rid of this top part. And if you're using a border of some sort, then attach it. Keep the width the same, but make the height, you know, whatever height you want it. And then also do the same thing for this piece. This is going to be the next piece that board layers on here. This piece is cut. I'm trying to find all my pieces. Bear with me. This would be at 3.5 wide and be 1.3875 high because it's 1 and 3 eighths inch high. I don't think I wrote that down, but um, oh, bear with me. I'm sorry, 3.5 wide. Let me remeasure the height don't have it here. I'm sorry. Um, thought I had these all written down. This one I kind of cut out of the paper differently. So this is one and one and a half inches high because you don't want it covering the border. Duh. So that's where that's coming in. These are my little sentiment pieces. I just cut those so however they work out for you. I'm not going to give those dimensions for the back of it. Okay, then this piece is going to layer these two pieces, you know, a layer here. So this top or the background piece is cut at 3.625 by. Just a second here. I think three and three quarters. I'm going to double check. Nope. It's at four and a quarter high. 3.625 wide. This will be 3.5 wide. Four and one eighth inch tall. So 4.125. She'll love my spunky measurements, right? One last piece to give you, well two pieces actually. This is going to be the same as the front layer, just mirrored. This is also cut at 3.625 inches wide. And just wondering if I have it back here. I know I wrote this one down or not. Take it back. It's 3.75 inches wide. I'm sorry, 3.75, two inches high. This is the pocket for the tag. I'm going to try to remember to put these on the uh, description box. So if it helps you, I, I will, if you have questions, but best to just double check in the description box because I'll put all this, the sizes in there. This little lace piece, though, is. 3.75 wide, 0 0.529 high is what it came out at. And it just will go on like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get my pieces put together. I inked the brown pieces. I don't ink anything with the white and like that green. It really shows up poorly on the... Uh, On the white on the that checkered, you know, it just doesn't work well. So I did not. Sorry, just putting glue in here on my tag. Okay. So I'm going to try to get this on. Probably shouldn't be working with art glitter glue because I don't have a lot of wiggle time. One thing I failed to get, excuse me. 
is my bone folder. I just like to burnish everything down really well. I'm going to flip this over and do my back side before I do anything further. So I can kind of work on this and get this back done. Just getting some glue on my piece here. I did find most of the paper I was working with on the previous tag. Sometimes that's not always the case because I don't usually buy more than one packet of paper. And this was a kit I had purchased from, well it's an Echo Park kit, but I don't usually get more than one. Okay, so on the pocket for the tag, you only want glue on three sides, any like any pocket. You know how to put a pocket on, I guess. I'm sorry. If you don't want to put a pocket on, you don't have to do this part. You could even leave the black back plain. Um, I just thought this would be really fun to put on if you're making a gift for someone, like a birthday gift or just some cookies or something, baked goods and you want to put the recipe in, you could put the recipe in the pocket. If you were giving a gift card of some sort, you know, it'd be fun to put in there. So that's my thinking. I honestly lay awake at night designing things in my head because I don't sleep a lot with, I have a lot of pain, so I don't always sleep real well. And so yeah, I design things. I have a notebook, Ooh, drop that. I have a notebook by my nightstand, you know, by my bed, so I can write down my ideas and thoughts and wonder I sleep, right? Or don't sleep, one of the two. Okay, so I'm just going to give you an idea how you could just stick your gift card or your pocket. If you feel you want this a little deeper, just make it a little bit higher. I just, that's the size I made it. Okay, next I'm going to put this piece on. Well, I'm going to put my layer on there first. It'll just be, I like to add the top layers first, I guess. Before I forget, I do want to welcome all my new subscribers. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you to my wonderful subscribers that have been with me for some time. You know all of my quirks and you still put up with me. I appreciate that. <sighs> Got glue everywhere. It's very, very humid today and everything is sticking to everything. Okay, now we're going to put this next piece on. I'm going to be listing this particular tag in my eBay storefront. I will leave a link to that. Just put some stuff in there. I hope to be adding more. I've been I don't know what I do, but like, there's always something going on. Excuse my reach. I'm going to put this piece on next. I am not good at layering and designing tags. I uh, often will use a card sketch. Go from there because I'm just not good at this. I happen to see this particular design somewhat mm -hmm. I don't know if it was graphic 45 or if it was on Pinterest it was a little bit different but kind of get the general idea of what it looked like and so I am um, this is what I came up with this was my idea and version of it I like to take an idea that someone has and make it my own and I don't have a lot of dies 
trying to keep my computer awake, which is fine. I just make my Cricut do the work. Like this border, I didn't have um, dies for. I don't have a lot of, not dies, but punches either. So I would happen to win a bunch of files. I got a $10 certificate to my scrap chick and they were having a dollar sale. So this is one of the designs I got. I love getting border files and whatnot because I use them a lot then instead of punches. Punches don't last always very long either, so this works. Forgot to tell you, this little girl is po uh, popped up on foam tape. Before I put her on, I want to bring my sentiment piece in. There's nothing better than a friend unless it's a friend with chocolate. I love that sentiment. I would agree 100%. And I got this from, speaking of friends, from Kim Ferguson in a stamp set. And I have used those stamps for cards so often. It's just, uh, I love them. Before I forget, I'm going to pop this on the back. Just to, uh, you don't have to. You could, you know, if you wanted to put a, a to and from here, there will be a small amount of room. I just thought I would cover it up. I don't think I did on the last one because I was going to leave it blank for, um, someone to write just a quick little note you know just happy birthday or thank you or for you whatever the case may be but um since I'm not sure what this will be and there's still you can write on it so okay So the reason I didn't pop her on yet is I kind of want to see where this is going to fit with her on there. And I'm trying to kind of get it so there's not much hanging off this time. So I'm going to leave her there. I'm going to put all but about, what, a, not even a quarter of it. And that looks good. Now I'm going to try to, nope, I can't bring it down because I can't bring her down at all. I didn't want to cover up some of that border, but I'm trying to make sure it's kind of straight too. All right. Get. I use uh, an exceptional amount of craft foam tape, if, or craft foam if you can't see. Got to make sure it's sturdy on there, so just trying to get everything glued. I had previously made a um, scrapbook layout with the little boy from this set. I had a lot of fun with this. I really enjoy it. I realize there's one thing I missed and I forgot to cut yet, and that was the um, bow. Up at the top, there's a paper bow I cut from Little Scraps of Heaven Designs. Uh, there's a 3D bow she has that I use quite often. So I will come back and put that on before I finish here. But I'm going to put three little eyelets here. I've got some red eyelets from, I'm sorry for the glare, eyelet outlet. I can get them open. And I do for my little tool here, I do apply extra adhesive to the back of these. Probably not the one I'm going to work. It's not going to work for me. Let's see if this one will work. No. Fingers just will work fine then. It's because over time these eyelets don't always hold the best. And just put another little 
Do you have a glue? You could use, you know, any color if you want. Don't have to put these on. I don't have um, red Nouveau drops. That I have the glitter ones, but I don't want to use glitter on this. So. And one more. Baby. Now my last one, I used a... Oh, I can't get these things tonight. Good grief. Craziness. I used a white eyelet, so tonight, today, I'm going to use a brown eyelet. I use these bigger ones. I think these are from We Are Memory Keepers. I'm not sure. It's they're quite old. How about that? Okay, so I'm going to try to do this upside down. What I'm trying to do is kind of figure out where the center is. Put a little pencil mark where I want these. So it's about in the middle of that red. And I chop this with my crocodile. I'm going to use the 3 16 inch hole. And I apologize, but I'm sure the camera is going to. I'm going to pick it up and try to do it there. Switch it back. Get that out of your poor sight, I'm sorry. Put it back. Put my eyelid in there. Oh, I have to do this off camera a minute. I'm really sorry. This will never work for me. Others probably might make it work. We'll see what it's. No, it didn't quite set yet. I'm not good at this whole business of setting eyelets with my crocodile. I apologize. So, oh. I usually use a hammer and a Uh, my eyelet setter thing, but anyway, this will work. Now I have this ribbon from Really Re Reasonable Ribbon. I'm going to cut off a good chair here. I'm going to say, let's see, just where's, let's go this way. I'm at about, only going to use about 24 inches. I'm just trying to kind of measure where. That is that. Okay. Oh, I can't. I tell you, I forget everything. My uh, magnets, they're a little strong. Getting some of this garbage out of your way. Use my reach again. All right, back in business. What I do is fold this in half, go in the wrong direction. I'll cut that little bit of freight off and edge in a minute. Okay, I have to fold it in half to get it through my little in my eyelid. It might need some assistance getting in there to start, which is fine. Mm, trying to find something a little smaller. Let's see if it will work with this.
you know, I don't have this issue when I'm off camera. It's funny, and yet I come on of, to do a video and nothing works. <laughs> and I have don't have these issues when I'm doing it myself. That's crazy. But I'm just here working by myself and not on film. Let's see if we can start at this the this one little corner. I think, I think I got it. I don't know. And then a little bit further. Nope. Please tell me I'm not the only one who has these uh, crazy little mishaps. I don't have a pen. I know what I can try to use this little thing. in there I think ha maybe oh goodness gracious that was a fight I am so sorry okay so I have this loop the edge I just put both of my tails through that loop pull it tight and I want to pull both of my tails at the same time so they're fairly even. So I have just left it so my tails are here. That way um, the recipient can tie it, you know, however they want. And there's a little bit of length on there. Then what I come back and do is put a little ribbon on here. I'm going to uh, come back and show you how I make, what well, not a ribbon, a bow. I'll show you how I make the bows. I don't know if I've shared that with you before. Very simple, but I will be back in just a moment or two. Hang tight. Okay, thanks for staying with me. I appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and share with you. So this is the 3D bow from Little Scraps of Heaven Designs. I used, there's, it comes with two sizes. One has a thinner bow. The width is less and then this one I use the wider of the two you could I believe just cut one of each of these this is the band that goes around and then one of each of these the skinny and the wide one and you could layer them too but just sticking with one for right now what I do is take my bone folder whatever you use um, I believe you could use a paintbrush I just did like my, my bone folder so I'll start with the, this little insert. All I'm doing is breaking down the fibers so it'll curl better. And I'm just, there's not anything, you know, real specific. I just like it so it'll bend easy, okay? So that's all I'm doing with that. This piece, I'm gonna try to stop just at this little end piece because that's where I'm gluing it. I start just past this little metal piece that's kind of where I'm gluing everything so I just start with part of it um, and I just kind of work it this is really thick paper so it wants to bend easy for me um, and make sure you have a really sturdy sturdy hold here strong grip you don't want it to tear anything so I just basically have it so it's curled like that all I do To remember not to try to talk with the pin in my mouth. Good grief. I just put a little dab of glue here. And even though this is quick dry glue, I'm, I'm just spinning this over. For some reason, this doesn't always hold the best for me. I just hold it a little bit with my tweezers. You can also um, I want to say, run this through the cuddle bug folders or your embossing folders. Sorry, I had my cuddle bug for probably 20 years, so it's just, or however long they've been out. Um, finally, I had to get rid of it. It kind of died, but so it's always going to be my cuddle bug folders. Excuse me. But anyway, um, you can run it through embossing folders. That works really well. So, 
I'm going to glue the other piece and I just put a little bit of dab glue on that piece there and bring it to the center and again I'm going to use my tweezers to hold it. If it bends a little bit here, gets a little bit squished, don't worry, we're going to fix that in just a moment or two. I wait till I'm all done have it all together. Then I go back and fiddle with it. Okay, I take it so the piece that's glued that you don't see goes to the bottom. I just put a little bit of glue in the middle here. Center this on. And again, smash it together because I want it to hold good. Don't want it coming apart when I try to put that metal piece on. So I should make a big note on my computer, but I still will miss it to get a new tweezers. It's just is not holding together for me. Okay, so see how it wants to pop apart. I just give it a little bit more time. I'm sorry. I'm just doing that. I'm going to try to work with two fingers here. I'm going to hold it from the inside for just a moment and put a little bit of glue on the center here. Just to hold this metal piece down. And I just kind of center it. Again, hold it down. What I'm going to do is on the back bring these pieces together. So I'm going to Put some glue on here. And then hold that for a minute. And then this piece will also come and just wrap around. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on. Sorry if you can't. I'm trying to work around my hands and it's it's one of those things that's so tiny it's hard to do that. I'm going to hold that for a little bit. So while well, I'm just going to leave my tweezers on there, or if you have a little mini paper, I've got a little mini clothespin, I've got some around somewhere, that would hold it really well too. I take, this is my Cricut spatula, you can use a paintbrush. This is a little thinner so I'm going to use that for right now. Um, I just come in and roll this around, kind of work it around my bow. Well, maybe this will work bigger or better, I don't know. Um, but just kind of, and it'll bring it back to life if it's kind of squished down. I want to hold that still in the middle, so get this. You can manipulate paper quite easily, as you can see. So there is my bow, and it will just pop right on here. Just put it right below the eyelet, and here I'm going to put a little extra glue on, so I want it to stay good. I'm sorry, I have to hold this up a bit to get it kind of centered where I want it. And I'm going to use my bone folder to go underneath my bow part there and kind of burnish it down. If you wanted to put something in the middle of your bow, you could. But um, there you have the finished tag. Get that out of the way. And I hope that helps. And I will leave the dimensions on the, on the description box. But otherwise, thank you all for joining me. I will be, by next video, I'm going to be cutting, if not tonight yet, tomorrow, the uh, pieces for the Nutty Bunch. Again, I am, again, I'm so sorry. And I will do that video also very soon for you in the next few days. All, nothing else happens. So, thank you for joining me. Have an awesome night.